Yeah, what's up everybody and welcome in. They let us do another one. Can you believe it? It is FST Fantasy Sports today. My name is Matt Strager. His name is Joe Pizzapia. Yep, you heard it. It's that name, Joe Pizzapia, because he's famous. And I'm not kidding. This is a guy that, that masterminded an industry revolutionizing concept called the Black Book Series. It's got a sexy name too. But Joe, this is where you and I sit down for the next couple hours, foreseeable future, and just dive in to football. Welcome, my friend, and good morning. Good morning. And speaking of sexy, look at Matt Stryker. I know on the radio you can't see him. But on TV, <laughs> look at this guy this morning, 8 a.m. He's got the blazer on, the hair is ready, the beard is tight. There's a lot to keep up with. I'm going to have to up the game. You know, I usually wear the tie on Sunday mornings for football. So I like to outdress at least Matt Stryker because I certainly can't hairdo him. I can't, I can't out hairdo Matt Stryker. It's just not, we're not in that vein anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, baby, this is it. We're getting ready. I know a lot of people have their fantasy drafts this weekend. I know a lot more are to come in the weeks ahead. So we're going to get you prepared for all of that. And then in the season, we're going to help you manage those leagues, deal with trades. We're going to have great guests on. We're also going to talk DFS. So this is your one-stop shop. Nobody else is doing a two-hour fantasy football show on any network. This is the one right here, Fantasy Sports Today, Sunday morning game day edition for you right here on Sports Grid. And today we're going to start with the Jets. I know you'd like to start a little bit higher up on the trough, but Zach Wilson <laughs> with his knee injury, um, they haven't yet ruled him out for week one. It's something that I think most likely is going to happen. Uh, but Joe Flacco would be holding down the fort for the New York Jets in the interim if Zach Wilson's not available. And it's probably wise to not push him. The last thing you want is to have a major injury for your young quarterback that you've invested a lot of money, time, and energy in in his second season. You don't want that happening. So I assume that cooler heads will prevail, but you never know. It is the Jets, Matt. Uh, also with Houston, some good fantasy news out of the Texans for a change. Damian Pierce. Looked really good in his final tune-up there earlier this week. Uh, he looks like the three-down back. He is catching footballs. He is running footballs. That seems to be the dude. And in an era of three-down backs that are becoming, well, extinct in the NFL to a certain degree, Damian Pierce is that dude. He is that guy. And, yes, it's a bad offense, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can't go and reach for him a little bit with a pick, and we'll talk about that a little bit more to come. Uh, Kenny Pickett making a late push for starting duties. I've been on this wagon the whole time. Uh, just like it was last year where Mac Jones was going to start week one for the Patriots. Everybody thought I was crazy when I said that on July 4th. And guess what? Last year, July 4th, I was right. I was right on August 4th. I was right on September 4th. It was Mac Jones the whole time. I think Kenny Pickett is the future. So why shouldn't the future start now? And I think he's looked better than Trubisky. Look, I know Kenny Pickett's not a finished product quite yet. But if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, I don't know why you're going to waste your time starting Mitch Trubisky. I just don't get it. Uh, all right. And also the Panthers naming Baker Mayfield starting QB over Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold is going to be out for a while as well with an injury. So, Matt, it's a lot of quarterback news here. But I want to start with the running back. I want to start with Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans. Because right now, if you look in terms of the ADP, this guy is still really suppressed. Now, he has risen up the draft board compared to where he was a few weeks ago. But still, I just think way too low when you're talking about uh, what potential he brings. And I understand it's the Houston Texans. And I understand it's not like a super exciting offense and nobody wants to really get too involved in that. But to me, Pierce looks like a guy that could really outperform his ADP. And I know when you're watching him, I, you probably see the same thing I do, which is you think this could be a very exciting player. So despite the Houston shortcomings, Damian Pierce, that seems like a name people should be reaching for to me. What about you? Well, here's the thing as we welcome in our radio audience. This is FST Fantasy Sports Today. Matt Stryker and Joe Pizzapia with you here talking everything you need to get ready for your fantasy football drafts and to dominate your season. And Joe posed the question to me with regards to Houston's backfield. And I think the issue with Pierce, Joe, is this. With this new narrative prevailing in a lot of drafts where people are going wide receiver heavy early in the rounds, saying, I will take a quote-unquote lesser back later on. Pierce is going to become that guy more and more. He's going to be a trapdoor for a lot of people. But I just offer this caution. Be super careful because you're not the only person that's listening and watching this show or following along at SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV. So you have to be super careful about what kind of league you're in and, and what people know. If you're going to draft receiver heavy, you look at a running back like Pierce, and there are a few others that we'll talk about throughout the show, and you think you can get them later on, that's great. But if they're not there, Joe, what do you do? <laughs> well, just for a heads up in terms of rankings and differential, 
right now he is going drafted in the consensus on fantasy pro somewhere around rb 43 so that takes all the sites and composites them together right you can go as high as 37 on some of the adps where you've seen him in previous drafts after this weekend i think that's going to change in my ranks over at fantasy pros i've got damian pierce at rb 21 so he's already a low-end rb2 in terms of thought process and how i want to draft this guy what i can't wrap my mind around is how he could still be going after guys like ronald jones or or michael carter or even melvin gordon which is currently in the consensus adp where he's going after those guys so if you're in a league that maybe isn't that sharp but you're watching the mm-hmm. show today Damian Pierce is a guy to be a little bit more aggressive on. Also, in terms of being aggressive, some of these quarterbacks play, and in some of these situations with the quarterbacks. Uh, I don't know if Baker Mayfield can save the Carolina Panthers offense. He's certainly an upgrade to what they've had the last few years. We know that. Uh, and Kenny Pickett, I keep coming back to the same thing, Matt, which is if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, the future has got to start now. Like You've got to get into the situation where – You start to look ahead. You start to give this kid as many reps as you can. And if you don't think he's ready week one or month one, that's fine. But I do think it's something to keep in mind, especially in those super flex leagues. Pickett's a nice late pick. We come back for sleepers right here on Sports Grid. College football today. All right. Liberty, home, LSU, home, Ole Miss, home, and at Missouri. They're going to be favored in all of those games. What about the front three? Home against Cincinnati. They were a touchdown favorite. It's come down a bit. Going to be favored by double digits against South Carolina and certainly against Missouri State. That's seven. I think my floor is seven. I think this team could win. Maybe we keep talking about those 10 plus win market. I think they could flirt with it. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Tom Brady coming back under center. He wants to make sure he stays sharp, play some of those starters against the Colts. It does make some sense where before you'd say to yourself, are they crazy? Why would you play anybody in the final preseason game? Keep in mind, you have that extra week because we used to have a fourth preseason game, which we don't anymore. So it does make some sense here. Keep these guys sharp. As I like to say, they're football players. They need to play football. They can't just sit around for three weeks and then tee it up on week one. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. And his favorite setting in all of college football, at least one of them, the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. You know how I feel about the Sun Bowl, Ben. If I'm a 12-0 coach and I win my championship game and they say you're going to the college football playoff, no, 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 no. I'm going to the rolling (laughs) hills of Texas El Paso. I'm taking my team to the Sun Bowl. Absolutely love the atmosphere. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting because I feel like he's a little bit too expensive for what he is. And, you know, I prefer the guy we talked about earlier in the week, Trevor Lawrence. Probably even prefer Daniel Jones a little bit cheaper because those guys, Daniel Jones will run a little bit. Lawrence, I actually think, uh, probably has an even better range of outcomes. Only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. I'm not buying you dinner because I'm wrong. I'm buying you dinner because you're in town and it's a nice thing for a friend to do to another friend. Just buy them dinner. No, no, you, I have to pick up my phone and hold it right now because it's <laughs> buzzing nonstop <laughs> because you're talking. Well, that's what I do. So that's kind of my thing. It's kind of that's hard to stop me from talking. <laughs> kind of hard to stop me from talking. People have tried for 45 years. It hasn't really worked yet. So the Bostonian versus the book. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. Right. 
All right, welcome back in. It's FSB Fantasy Sports today. And all truth, the only fantasy is for me, Matt Strager, because I get to sit for the next couple of hours with Joe Pizzapia, the man. I get to talk fantasy football. All of us get to enjoy Joe's knowledge. And then we get to go out and dominate our leagues. And Joe, what I like about the relationship is I get to feel smart. I get to feel like I thought of that. I knew that guy, when in reality, clearly it came from you. And that's why I love what we're about to do, sleepers. Everyone loves to grab that guy that no one thought about. Everyone loves to grab that guy, and then the guy after you says, oh, darn it, I was just going to take him. No, you weren't. You just want to feel smart. So, Joe, smarten us up. What do you like? Well, I think the internet killed the idea of sleepers long, long ago. I mean, this notion that any of us are all not talking about the same guys is kind of ridiculous. But... I think there's still players that are undervalued and underappreciated, and that's really what it comes down to. So it comes down to players where the ADP isn't matching up to the expectations or the potential that they have to return on that investment. Therefore, these are guys that you can reach around early for. These are guys you can be more aggressive for. And it's not that nobody is saying, oh, I, oh my goodness, I don't know who this guy is. I've never heard of this guy. Of course, everybody hears of everyone because the way we play fantasy has changed so much because every host site is basically force-feeding you information. You know, Back in the day when people were doing this with – pencil and paper and then the early stat uh host sites didn't give you all the information and all the analysis and all the data now they do it's a very different playing field but there's still room to grow and there's still room to take care and advantage of um some of the lesser expectations people might have for certain teams like the houston texans and we're going to go back to our guy that we were just talking about damian pierce because pierce is one of those guys if you look at the projections potentially for this guy somewhere around 202 attempts 926 yards, eight touchdowns, 26 receptions. To me, this is a low-end projection of what he could be. If he stays healthy and plays all 17 weeks, he's going to have closer to 250 carries, even as a rookie. Okay, that That's probably more likely. If so, he's going to go well over 1,000 yards rushing. And he's already shown that he can work in the passing game. So what you're looking for is you're looking at projections and sites and some of the composites. And Fantasy Pros has all the composite projections, which is good because it gives you kind of like a bigger sense of the picture. But when you walk away from that, you go, all right, is that the base of what I'm drafting? And if the answer is yes, then that's a player that you want. Because if you think he's going to be better than this base of projections, and I do personally, once again, 17 games, 202 attempts, that's that's not a lot necessarily for Bell Cow back. I mean, if you look at, you know, how many attempts Najee Harris had last year, I don't think we're going to go to that end of the spectrum either. That was a lot of attempts for a rookie that they really had to, you know, push on and, and rely on he was at 307 last year just for perspective so it's not like a rookie running back can't come in and have a huge workload of course he can especially when there's really no other competition yes marlon mack was around rex burke has a couple other backs in that backfield so you might even see them baby him just a little bit in that first month of the season just to make sure they get him to the finish line but pierce is a guy that you're looking at with 202 attempts if that goes closer to 250 He's going to smash everything here. So that's a guy that, once again, if you're drafting him in the you know mid-30s at RB, uh, I think he's more or less RB21. I think he's more of a low-end RB2 right now, and I would draft him over the other guys because he's got the backfield to himself potentially, and that's what matters. That volume matters and the quality of that volume. So we spent a lot of time on Damian Pierce. Let's go to another running back who could be a potential sleeper this year. This guy's in New England. It's Ramondre Stevenson. Now, last year, Stevenson was a rookie. And there's a lot of reasons to be excited. He started off the year in the doghouse for Bill Belichick, but he eventually worked his way out of it. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson is a running back that can catch the football, a little bit bigger running back than, say, uh, Damian Harris, who he was in that backfield with sharing. Now, he lost a lot of touchdowns to Damian Harris last year. Damian Harris was kind of the grinder back of the Patriots offense, which is always going to be that, and he's still around. But the good news for Stevenson is this. Harris is on the last year of his contract, and the Patriots never – ever give second contracts to running backs it just doesn't happen so this is it so they're either going to burn and churn harris or at some point in the season you're going to see more ramondre stevenson as they try to transition this backfield away from harris and into stevenson as he kind of takes the reins Uh, now with james white out of the picture who retired there's a lot more work in the passing game yes they did draft pierre strong but i don't think they're going to put him right into that role right away so stevenson all of a sudden finds himself in an interesting spot where the future for Harris is probably non-existent. And now the past of James White isn't kind of nipping at his heels. So Ramondre Stevenson could potentially be this guy. If you look at the projections, 176 attempts, 737 yards, eight touchdowns, 33 receptions. That reception number could be higher. 
the yardage total uh, for rushing could be higher, especially if Harris has an injury. This becomes a player that all of a sudden could really break out if Harris misses any significant time. And I think it's one of the more interesting backfields to kind of collect, if you will. I'm not big on getting the handcuffs for the running backs, but when you have a guy like Stevenson and Harris and you know there's potential where if one is gone, the other one really will eat, then your fantasy team is going to be full of stats. So what do you think about Stevenson here and his opportunity in this backfield? Because in some drafts, I've seen people take Stevenson ahead of Harris, which I don't know if I'm there yet, but it's getting closer by the day. Yeah, it's interesting because sometimes we look at other drafts and we we let that inform ours. But like I've said, in our drafts, we have to look at them in a bubble. We have to most times know the people in them. If we're doing something public, maybe we don't. We have to at least watch the room. And I talked about it earlier in the first segment here, and I want to know your thoughts on it. For those people that are moving away from that early running back strategy, you're going to see them attacking names like this and like others. So with regards to New England that people will always assume to be a run-heavy team, I think you have to look at the makeup of the team and see some of the additions that they've made and kind of wonder how the field is now going to be stretched out. Use the word opportunity quite a bit. Before we move on to this next player, I'd like to ask you, with regard to Stevenson, wh- which round would you draft him in? And, and give me one or two other players that's in that's in that orbit. Well, look, Stevenson's right in that whole realm with Tony Pollard, Kareem Hunt for me. I would probably still go with Pollard or Kareem Hunt, but I think Stevenson is right there. Chase Edmonds in that conversation. Edmonds might have that backfield to himself, it seems like, or at least be the lead guy initially. But it's it's more about do you want to take the guy who long-term might be the better investment or the guy who short-term might be the better investment? And you can make the argument either way because, you know, you don't want to let fancy leagues get too far away from you saying, oh, by the time we get to week eight and nine, this guy's going to be really good. Well, by that time, what's your record and are you relevant? So I think Stevenson's right on that grouping. I think he's more, I would say, closer to the Devin Singletary, Antonio Gibson range, uh, probably in the late 20s, early 30s. I'll put it to you this way. Stevenson is my flex RB, good. As my RB2, I think that's putting too much pressure on him to be great right away. Uh, Another guy that you really should pay attention to this year, who I think is still a sleeper because, again, bad team, Jacksonville Jaguars, Christian Kirk. Now, if you go back and look at last year's stats for Christian Kirk with the Cardinals, 17 games, he had 77 receptions, 103 targets, 982 yards. I bet a lot of people didn't realize that yardage total was so high. And he had five touchdowns. He finished as wide receiver 24. So he finished as a wide receiver two in half PPR last year. If early preseason is any indication, this guy's going to get a 25 to 30% target share in this offense. He's going to be peppered with targets. That target number could go up to 120 plus. And if it does, he's going to have a chance to hit 100 receptions easily. And if he does, that makes him a huge asset in PPR leagues. And I think more touchdowns will follow. You could probably add another three touchdowns potentially to this number giver. You know, I want to give. I'm a giver, Matt. I want to give him some more touchdowns because I think – there's that opportunity. But Trevor Lawrence, you haven't seen the best of him yet. People are down on the Jaguars, as they should be. It's not a great team, but they're going to be playing from behind, and Christian Kirk is going to be getting a lot of targets. That's important. And the last guy is K.J. Osborne, uh, Minnesota Vikings. This player last year in 17 games, he caught 50 balls and 82 targets, small sample size, 655 yards, and seven touchdowns. So this guy had some touchdowns. This guy had some red zone moments. But more importantly, when Adam Thielen was not on the field, this guy was eaten. If you gave him 10 targets, he was catching nine of them. If you go look at the game logs, wherever you saw there's no Adam Thielen, K.J. Osborne stepped into that role. And as Thielen continues to age out, this is a player we should be a little bit skeptical of because K.J. Osborne is basically a free wide receiver. You can get this guy, stash him on your bench, and over time he might not even just play a little bit more when Thielen's out. He might just play more period because at this point, he might be the more effective wide receiver. So Kirk, KJ Osborne, Damian Pierce, Ramondre Stevenson, those are some sleepers. When we come back, we're going to talk about the bus, the other end of the spectrum, right here on Fantasy Sports Today. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts gabe marinci and cam stewart will get you ready for game time 
everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. College football today. Last year's Heisman winner is back. Now, part of the reason that the only person who's ever gone back to back in Archie Griffin back in the 70s is it's not super often that a Heisman winner is back. But the other reason is the expectations that you have to live up to go far beyond anybody else. Here is what Bryce Young brought to the table last year at Alabama. 4,872 passing yards. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting because I feel like he's a little bit too expensive for what he is. And, you know, I prefer the guy we talked about earlier in the week, Trevor Lawrence. Probably even prefer Daniel Jones a little bit cheaper because those guys, Daniel Jones will run a little bit. Lawrence, I actually think, uh, probably has an even better range of outcomes. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game everybody. live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back into FSB Fantasy Sports. Today, Match Tracker Joe Pizzapia with you here. You can take us with you anywhere you go. You can keep Joe in your pocket. At SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV. Those are the social media handles. I'll get through this without laughing. I'm just having a great time, folks. Is that a short uh, joke? I just want to know. Where, where do I stand? It was a witty commentary mm. on the... Okay on the narratives of the day. All right, uh, all kidding aside, I like before the last break we went in, we did the sleepers, right? And the social media has acted up quite a bit. People love that. But what about the busts? Because there's inevitably going to be someone mm. out there that's going to draft a someone and then go, oh, man, I regret that. Uh, let's start in San Francisco, a city where many have regrets. Mm. Eli Mitchell, uh, what do you think? <laughs> I think I left my heart in San Francisco, if memory yeah, serves. Uh, but the, you know, before yeah. the, we came back from the break, though, Matt and I were talking about, you know, things that sound like a good idea. Like he was talking about going out to dinner with two small children. He thought it sounded like a good idea. And I told him, you know, I know this. My daughters are both older now, way older than Matt's. And I was like, no, it's never a good idea when they're very little. It's very difficult to go out to dinner. So you convince yourself that something's a good idea. And then when you get there about 15 minutes in, you know it's a bust. It's a terrible idea. That's how these players are. That's the perspective. These players are like going out to dinner with two children under the age of three. It's hard. It's a challenge. It's a lot of work. You're outside of your element. You don't have the normal toys, the normal things, the normal food. It's a lot to take in. And eventually, everybody just goes home with indigestion. That's what happens. So uh, we will start in San Francisco. And we will start with Eli Mitchell, who had a really nice season last year. Now, Let's keep some things in mind in a little perspective. Let's look first at the game total for Eli Mitchell. 11. 11 games. He missed some time last year, okay? He also came out of nowhere. He had lower draft stock than Trey Sermon did. 
And, you know, God bless him. He had a good season. 207 attempts for 963 yards. That was good for well, more than four and a half yards per carry. Uh, he had 19 receptions, 137 yards. Wasn't big in the passing game. Uh, he did score six touchdowns also. You'd like him to have a little bit more of a touchdown total if he's going to be more of the ground and pound guy. He finishes RB26 last year. RB26 over 11 games. That's fair. And everybody gets very excited about the Shanahan offense when it comes to running backs. But the thing they forget is the Shanahan offense is famous for going to a new running back every single year. Every single year, it's a different running back. It's a different situation. It's kind of like Pete Davidson and his girlfriends. We just constantly go through them, and it's something different every single time. And do any of us really sit here and think that Eli Mitchell did enough last year to be the guy? He also missed time, and now he's got a mobile quarterback in Trey Lance. So Debo Samuel was getting a lot of carries last year. I don't think he's going to get nearly as many as he did in 2021 and 2022. I think Trey Lance is going to break off and run a lot. And you see what that does in terms of, running back productivity when you look at say Jalen Hurts right last year that's a great indicator of you know how many how many touchdowns did Miles Sanders have last year huh do you remember zero that's right none uh, and I'm not saying that Eli Mitchell's going to be completely useless I'm not saying Eli Mitchell's not going to have some moments but do we want to make a season-long investment in him I think that's a bad one personally and when you're looking at where he's going in terms of draft capital yeah he's a little bit on the cheaper side but I'd still be looking for the Ramondre Stevensons of the world over him. I'd still be looking for, you know, the Tony Pollard certainly over him and some of those players. I just feel like we're, we're in a spot, Matt, with Eli Mitchell, where there's so many potential negatives and all everybody wants to do is look at the positives from last year. And there were plenty, but when a guy doesn't work in the passing game, when a guy is losing carries to mobile quarterbacks, when a guy misses time and he was a late draft capital rookie last year, sell me on where it's all good with Eli Mitchell, Matt, because I can't see it. No, I can't. And I like the analysis that you gave and I'll often sing your praises, but at the end of the day, at least you showed support. Remember at the end of the day, I used to be a social studies teacher in the New York city public school system. So I like when you History. show your work and, uh, but still you, you made your point when you look at a, a back like Mitchell and you look at where the offense is going with that team and you look at all the other names on the back of the jerseys there, you wonder where you're going to find the value. And I like that you're always giving out, other players that you pivot towards versus this player. So now you mentioned uh, Philadelphia, you mentioned Miles Sanders, you mentioned the no touchdowns. I mean, he finished at an RB 41, I believe last year. How do you put him this year and give me some other players that you'd prefer over Miles Sanders? Uh, yeah, look, Miles Sanders is another one too, where you look at Miles Sanders, zero touchdowns again. And last year, 12 games kind of, it's eerily similar, isn't it? It's feeling a lot like the guy we just talked about to a certain extent. 137 attempts, 754 rushing yards. Now he did have a nice uh, five and a half yards per attempt. That's great. But still, if you're not getting touchdowns, that's a killer, man. Uh, 26 yeah. receptions in 158 receiving yards. Um, he finishes RB 41 and a half PPR last year. Uh, when you're looking at this backfield now, I think Kenneth Gainwell is the superior receiving back. I think he's going to get a lot of work. Miles Sanders already dealing with a knee injury. Uh, if you're looking at right now, his current ADP, uh, Miles Sanders is in the same reign. Right now, he is being drafted as RB29, right? So Chase Edmonds is going after him. Kareem Hunt's going after him. Tony Pollard, Ramondre Stevenson, even young guys like Ken Walker, Brian Robinson are all going after him. So you have a couple of choices here. When you are in a league, uh, and I'm sure most host sites, whether it be ESPN or Yahoo or wherever you tend to play, they're going to have Miles Sanders probably still ranked pretty high, probably ranked somewhere in that you know, mid to high 20 range. Most of these other guys are going to be ranked after, which tells me you have two choices. You can either reach for one of those other running backs or take a wide receiver there. Take a tight end in that range in the draft. Take somebody else, something else, a quarterback, a high-end quarterback that might slip through the cracks, right? Take somebody else there, then pivot to one of those other running backs in the following round. To me, it's not even so much about taking somebody over Miles Sanders. It's just that area where you're looking at Miles Sanders and Cordero Patterson and guys that, you know, you know, last year had their moments and like Cordell Patterson had a great first half of the season, a terrible second half of the season, right? I think the, the wear and tear caught up with him of the workload they gave him. And I don't know how much we want to buy into this Falcons offense and a guy like Miles Sanders, who people keep wanting to happen, right? Remember last year, last year was supposed to happen, right? Because finally we got a new head coach and they were going to finally run the ball. Well, they did, 
They ran it with Jalen Hurts. And this is what happens when you have a yeah. rushing quarterback sometimes. It just doesn't work uh, in terms of your fantasy capital. So I'd much rather, let's say, take a late, 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 late flyer on Kenneth Gainwell in PPR leagues than I would Miles Sanders at his current ADP either. So that's how I feel about those guys. Uh, you mentioned and you mentioned it twice, actually, uh, Robinson over in Washington, and I almost want you to stop mentioning it because I don't want too many people to be in on it, but that, that seems to be the way people are going, especially when you want to pivot off of some of these names. But yeah, of course, the, you know, the book, the site is always going to have the, these names still situated, but now that you're in the know, you realize that they don't really belong there, per se. Uh, another name that you're going to see this with on the wide receiver standpoint is going to be out in Cleveland. Talk a little bit about Amari Cooper and where you think he could land. Yeah, Amari Cooper right now is kind of in no man's land because you've downgraded quarterback for the first 10 weeks of the season to Jacoby Brissett. And Jacoby Brissett has been in the league for a while, but he's not Deshaun Watson. Okay, let's let's be frank about this. Uh, last year, 15 games, he had 68 receptions, on 104 targets. Uh, 865 yards, eight touchdowns. Like this is not a receiver necessarily that I think moves the needle right now. Uh, but the problem is he has name brand recognition. And that's the dangerous thing when it comes to Amari Cooper. People recognize the name. They recognize the talent. He's been around for a while. They feel somehow it's safe. And they think, oh yeah, well, eventually Watts is coming back. Hey, guess what? That's your fantasy playoffs practically. So Amari Cooper is a guy that I can understand trading for maybe in week seven, you know, and somebody's really disappointed or needs a lot. Maybe they put too much capital in him and he hasn't done much. And then hope, hopefully when Deshaun Watson returns, you get Watson and Cooper doing some special things here down the stretch and into the playoffs. But to draft him makes no sense to me at this current ADP. He finishes wide receiver 28 right now last year, and that was on the Cowboys offense. Now, I know you had to share a lot of targets there, but still, Cooper's always been a guy that's been very up and down. Uh, another wide receiver who we already talked about too, Adam Thielen, right? Adam Thielen... We were just kind of touching on it when we talked about K.J. Osborne. 13 games last year. Some of the tread on the tires. He's been there a while. I mean, we've seen this with Julian Edelman. We've seen this with some other similar style wide receivers where, you know, <clears throat> these guys, they, they take a lot of, of punishment over the middle. They're not afraid to go over the middle. But eventually, that all catches up with them. And eventually, sometimes that wall or that cliff, you know, is very steep. And all of a sudden, they fall off quite a bit. And I, I don't care that Thielen is touchdown dependent. That doesn't bother me. He had 10 touchdowns that year. That's great. Uh, I'm all for the guys who catch touchdowns. People say, oh, the touchdown regression. No, no, no. Give me all the touchdown guys. Guys who have confidence of their quarterback in the red zone is an important thing. But I think Thielen right now is not the best investment. There's a lot of guys like Hunter Renfro in that same range I'd rather have than him. Younger wide receivers, maybe another version of Thielen, but a lot younger. And then at the tight end position, we have Dawson Knox. Uh, Dawson Knox, another guy last year, nine touchdowns for a tight end. That's huge. If you score a touchdown as a tight end, <laughs> you're a tight end one that week. We talk about it all the time. Um, the problem is, I'm not sure where he fits into this offense now. Gabriel Davis, I think, is ready to really take that next step. Uh, you've seen Crowder come in, too. You've seen James Cook get drafted. There's a lot of other options here, and it just feels like the repeat season for Dawson Knox is – difficult to see now i'm not saying you can't take him if you punt tight end and you end up with dawson knox and a good offense sure it, that's okay but let's not put too much draft capital in him thinking that oh he's gonna build on that like the 49 receptions become 70 receptions that is not happening you could also probably get away with somebody even later than dawson knox like a cole commit or somebody like that in in ppr leagues because i think he's gonna work a lot and then real quick matt i just want to go back if i can to eli mitchell because we talked about <clears throat> where he's going in terms of other running backs he's going right after travis Etienne, right before aj dylan those are two of the running backs that i think have huge potential this year and the fact that eli mitchell is sandwiched in between them just is crazy because you have two guys there in Etienne and dylan who have enormous breakout potential and then you have eli mitchell who has so much downside i don't even see how they're close when we come back we're going to move away from the bus and talk about the breakouts. These are the guys who are going to win you leagues. Matt Stryker and I are going to let you know who they are. We come back right here on Sports Grid. This is Fantasy Sports Today. Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. 
Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College and football the today. Of Alabama and winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. Can they survive those first four games? They go two and two. Pro football two. today. To this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In game live, you can all take the access. Points. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In I'm game go. live, prime time. I'm a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Welcome back in FST Fantasy Sports Today. The train rolls on. Matt Stryker and Joe Pizzapia with you here. We've given you sleepers. We've given you busts. Now let's talk the breakouts, Joe. And for those that recognize the name Joe Pizzapia, just do a quick Google search. He's the author and the mind behind the Black Book series. It's changed the way people just basically look at sports, watch sports, wager on sports, and win their fantasy leagues. You're the perfect guy to sit down talk to especially about breakouts how do you determine a breakout who do you have your eye on where do you want to go first well what you do is you pick up my favorite sleepers from last year and some of them didn't quite hit as soon as i wanted them to and they become the breakouts of this year look i mean sometimes you're right you're just not right soon enough uh, that's the problem with guys like gabriel davis right one of my favorite guys i'm on ross st brown one of my last picks in every single league but i had to cut him five, six weeks into the season because nothing was going on there for him. And unfortunately, bye weeks happen, right? We all know the rest is history when it came to Amon Ross St. Brown. And Gabriel Davis had a pretty good finish to the season and playoff run. But these are some of the guys this year that I think are right in this next uh, situation to take a step forward. These are the players. I just talked about one of them and A.J. Dillon. It's sacrilege to me that A.J. Dillon is being selected right around the same spot as Eli Mitchell. Okay, let's talk about A.J. Dillon, shall we? 2021 statistics. He played in all 17 games, 187 attempts, right? That's not a huge number by any stretch of the means for running back. So he didn't get worked too hard early in his career or anything like that. He had a very good college career, 803 rushing yards, 4.3 yards per attempt. He had 34 receptions though. 
That's what I want to talk about. 34 receptions for 313 yards. He had seven touchdowns. He finished as RB20 in half PPR last year. The 34 receptions is something he can build on. He showed you that he can catch the football. And that is huge because now there's a huge vacancy in that Packers offense looking for targets to go somewhere. They're not all going to Aaron Jones. They're not all going to Alan Lazard. And there's a lot of question marks of who else they're going to. Is it Sammy Watkins? Is it Romeo Dubs? Is it Christian Watson? We don't know. But one thing I do know is that in the second half of last year, A.J. Dillon was getting the goal line work. A.J. Dillon looked like the better back. Aaron Jones missed some time with an injury. Aaron Jones has had his three-year window, and he might be very good again this year. But typically speaking, that three-year window for running backs, even talented ones, seems to be what they are. And then they start to fall off a little bit. It's odd when you get an Adrian Peterson or an Ezekiel Elliott or somebody who stays elite for five, six years. That doesn't typically happen in the NFL. So instead of being slow to it and drafting, you know, Aaron Jones where he's going currently in the second round, why don't we wait to the fourth or fifth round and take AJ Dillon instead, who very well might have the same, if not more fantasy points. He's the younger back than Aaron Jones, who's 27 years old. There's so many reasons to invest in AJ Dillon over Aaron Jones for so many reasons. But we talk about return on investment at ADP and AJ Dillon to me is just a better investment at this point. You have less to lose, more to gain, and it allows you earlier in the draft in that second round to take that big time wide receiver, to take that other, yeah. you know, big time running back or big tight end, or even if you want to reach for a Josh Allen late in the second round. Okay, fine. Because AJ Dillon's sitting there in the fourth, you can make up the ground there. And I think this is one of my biggest targets. I've got a ton of shares of AJ Dillon, so I always practice what I preach, not just talking about players that I don't draft. So A.J. Dillon, I know when we have Pat Fitzmorris on an hour or two, he's going to talk a lot about A.J. Dillon, too, probably, if I know Pat. So that is, to me, one of these guys that really sticks out, Matt. And I think that people need to be more aware of the upside of A.J. Dillon. Well, there's an importance to the category. And I, I think you really mm -hmm. hit the nail on the head. Again, you're going to find that people will rush to those running backs. Rush, rush, rush. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to draft wide receiver heavy early, this is a great pivot, a great way. And we talked about it, though, that there is just that slight chance that a guy like Dylan won't be there for you. So then maybe you pivot to Jacksonville. Is that mm -hmm. a likely way to go? It is. Uh, Travis Etienne, I know people are worried because they haven't seen him yet. And not everybody who plays fantasy football watches college football. I can attest. This guy was special when he played at Clemson with Trevor Lawrence. And who's his quarterback in Jacksonville? Oh, wait, Trevor Lawrence. I was super excited about ATN last year. I'm super excited this year. Unfortunately, last year we had the ACL, but he is so much more removed from that injury than a lot of other guys that people want to be drafting right now. He is more than 12 months now removed, basically, from that injury. So to me, this is a no-brainer. This is a guy that is going to catch passes. That's very valuable in fantasy, especially in the full PPR formats. That could be a huge winner. He doesn't have to score a ton of touchdowns. If you look at the projections here for him in 2022, because we don't have any stats last year, he didn't have a rookie season. So this is his rookie year. Again, the do-over. 178 attempts, 800 rushing yards, seven touchdowns, 50 receptions. Okay, that's reasonable. That's a baseline for what this guy can do. There's more. There's more potential touchdown equity. There's more potential rushing yard equity. James Robinson's coming off a torn Achilles. We saw what Cam Akers looked like after that injury. It's great that James Robinson's on the field, that he's pushing because he knows his spot is in jeopardy because of this guy. So don't let James Robinson's presence in camp, no matter what reports tell you, put you off of Travis Etienne. Even if early it's slow to the uptake, stay the course because I'm telling you Travis Etienne is a better talent. He's the guy they invested heavy draft capital. They need that return. And that rapport with Trevor Lawrence is not to be overlooked. And that's a very important thing, especially for a young quarterback to have guys in the offense he trusts. So it's funny, a little bit of a theme, finding some of these guys of good values on bad offenses. It can happen. We want to invest in good offensive ecosystems when we can. We want to take advantage of people's negative perceptions at the same time on offenses that you don't think are very good, but points are points at the end of the day, Matt. Yep, yeah, and it's an interesting thought process. You take an offense, an offensive ecosystem like Jacksonville, yeah. and you can see where it would all play out. But when you look at a team like, say, Buffalo, then you start to say to yourself, well, where are all these points going to be distributed? Obviously, Josh Allen is there, and then you have Diggs. And you even look at a guy like Isaiah McKenzie. Where does Gabriel Davis fit in? He has seen so much hot air. In the last two mm -hmm. weeks, where does Gabe Davis truly fit in with this Buffalo offense? I mean, Beasley Sanders gone, so let's take all these things into consideration, Joe. 
Well, most of the hot air has been provided by yours truly. Uh, I've I've been providing it. You can blame me. He's all the way up to wide receiver 26 now and half PPR in consensus. Um, just, a, I would say, two weeks ago, he was wide receiver 36. So, And that was too low. So, sorry. Sorry, America. I've ruined nice things yet, yet again. And a lot of my colleagues have as well because we all see the same thing. And that's something to pay attention to. When we all see the same thing, it's kind of like, Calvin Ridley and DK Metcalf a couple years ago, right? When that was, when we sat here on this very show two years ago and told you those are the guys who are going to break out. Last year, we were sitting here talking about T. Higgins, you know, going to break out even with Chase. That was going to be a, a great thing for his value, single coverage everywhere. That's what you're looking for. The wide receivers were going to jump a tier. You could still get Gabriel Davis at a pretty good value. I mean, I still think you're going to draft him in most leagues. He's still going to be a guy that's drafted as a wide receiver three. But I think at the end of the day, he's going to finish as a high-end wide receiver too. That's enough of a, a jump to make the investment. It's a great offense. You look at the projected totals here. Again, just projected totals. Nine touchdowns, 960 yards, and 65 receptions. Now, that's the low end, I still say. The touchdown total sounds about right to me too. We don't want to go too crazy with touchdown totals. It is a good offense. And the one thing about Gabriel Davis is historically, even his rookie season, the guy found the end zone. He was very good in the red zone. Josh Allen looked for him many times. And I think the confidence of Josh Allen in his rookie season in Gabriel Davis is why I liked it was so much last year. The problem was too many veterans around. Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, all these guys who would take away targets from him. And then eventually the Buffalo Bills just went, what are we doing here? Gabriel Davis is that guy. And they started getting Gabriel Davis the ball more in December. And we all know what happened in January, some of those games. So it's not a fluke. It's just finally the Bills realizing, look, enough is enough. You want to respect the veterans in the clubhouse. You want to respect the investments you made on them. But at a certain point, you got to win games. You got to play your best football. Gabriel Davis helps them do that. So to me, I look at this. I think these projections are pretty good. I think you could bid on those. I think there's still upside for more, potentially in that yardage total, believe it or not. I think he could cross 1,000 yards in 17 games quite easily. So to me, I'm looking at Gabriel Davis as a guy on the rise who can win you leagues. And I'm guaranteeing you unless you're playing in a very sharp league, he's still going to be drafted as a wide receiver three or maybe even a four because people still don't know and people still say, ah, oh, can I believe in the playoff run that he had? The answer is yes. For those of you who asked that question a couple of years ago on Leonard Fournette and didn't want to buy in, we were telling you to buy in, you missed out last year, didn't you? Kind of sucked, didn't it? Leonard Fournette was pretty good, wasn't he? So buy into it. Winning matters, good performance matters, no matter where it is, especially when it comes to young players. And I think Gabriel Davis is one of those young players who's ready to break out right on that precipice. Let me ask you an X's and O's question. We, we talk a lot about a lot of things, numbers and stuff, but at the end of the day, if a, a pocket tends to collapse and you have a, a mobile quarterback, is a receiver like Rashad Bateman beneficial to that type of potential breaking down of a pocket, Jackson scrambling, things like that? Your thoughts? He is. Um, and, and more to the point, Rashad Bateman has better skills than any other wide receiver he's ever played with in his tenure. And I, and I have no problem saying that. This guy was a monster in college. He has Keenan Allen-esque kind of vibes for me. So Rashad wow. Bateman last year, the only problem was he got hurt in camp. And that was, you know, when you get hurt in camp as a rookie, you're missing a lot. It's a lot to transition to the NFL anyway. Then you put in all the COVID stuff on top of it, you know, all the adjustments people had to make, you putting in all the time he missed. And then when he finally came back healthy last year, Lamar Jackson was hurt. So he ended up playing with Tyler Huntley a lot. So, and he was good in some of those games, Rashad Bateman. So it was almost like a last year is a mulligan for him. And this year feels like the do-over. And this year feels like the opportunity where, yeah, uh, Lamar Jackson, you're talking about pockets breaking down that allows you to make plays and extend drives which gives offenses more opportunities to score which means guess what more fantasy points every time a josh allen or a lamar jackson or somebody like that extends a drive or picks up a third and 15 <laughs> with their legs that's more scoring opportunity for your offense then because they're getting another series of downs and it doesn't sound like it matters all that much but it does because most offenses touch the ball a certain finite number of times in each game Whenever you can give that another time, another time, the bonus time matters. Rashad Bateman's projections are around 77 receptions for 931 yards and six TDs. This is good. I think this is a good projection. Is there room for more? We have to ask ourselves this. I think the answer is yes. He's being drafted currently as wide receiver 35. Um, that's right in that same range as guys like Brandon Ayuk, who I think you could also make a case for. Uh, Hunter Renfro, who's a little bit safer. 
uh, Elijah Moore. I think this whole grouping over here is a very fruitful area. There's also some danger zone players like Tyler Lockett, like Adam Thielen, guys that are very recognizable, but might be older and in situations where, you know, Tyler Lockett, how excited can we be with Geno Smith playing quarterback? I don't know, but I'd rather take a shot on Rashad Bateman than Tyler Lockett at this point. Cause I want to, I almost want the unknown rather than that safety blanket that I'm used to that really just doesn't have any upside. I want the upside when I'm starting to draft wide receiver threes and fours. Bateman's that guy. All right, we're about under 30 seconds up against a break. Talk to me about Elijah Moore. Talk to me about the Jets. Can they win more than seven games with Moore? Go. Well, here's the thing. Elijah Moore did it last year with pretty much every quarterback. Had a good game with Wilson. Had a good game with Josh Johnson, with Mike White. I mean, maybe we get the ghost of Browning Nagel to come in, or maybe Joe Namath oh. can see if he can go one more time out there. But had he not been so good with everybody, I'd be more skeptical. But Elijah Moore is a great talent. If you look at the projections for him this year, 904 yards, six touchdowns, 70 receptions. I think this is a baseline. I think there's room to grow here. And, and it all depends on whatever next step you get from Zach Wilson. Now, I'm not a big Zach Wilson guy. Haven't been, wasn't before the draft, wasn't in college. But if Joe Flacco plays a little bit more, maybe these things go up. Or maybe just Elijah Moore is that dude and he makes everybody around him better. Garrett Wilson's come in too. He's still trying to figure things out, but Elijah Moore, I think, is going to be a sleeper this year and a potential breakout. We'll be right back with more right here on Sports Grid. A helmet swinging incident. Oh my goodness, Miles Garrett base got banned from the NFL. Aaron Donald doing this. The NFL is going to have to step in here and I don't know, give him five or six games. The NFL was very quick with the response. These are practices. We don't do anything with these practices. We don't sanction these practices. We're not going to go in there and say there's going to be violations from practices. That's up to the team itself. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The Dodgers probably at the top, but who do you think are true contenders to maybe knock off LA? I mean, either the Braves or the Mets absolutely could do it. Um, the Braves, their 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 uh, their lineup wears down pitching, and I've seen this over and over again, where they're up against top guys, and they you know they look bad for the first few innings, but they eventually get to them. They they they're just really good approaches at the plate. The Sports Grid Network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts gabe marinzi and cam stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid.
All right, welcome back into Fantasy Sports today. We call it FST for short. And somewhere I picture in, I don't know, in the corner of Swanson and Rittner in Philadelphia, an old ECW crowd just chanting, FST, FST, and the wall's just shaking. It just feels like it has that. Uh, Joe, as we close out this first hour here, you have a great stat of the day, and it always is something mm -hmm. that informs us, especially ahead of our drafts. So who's it come from, and what do you got? Well, in honor of that, my microphone is actually wrapped in barbed wire in honor of old school uh -huh. ECW. It's, yeah, baby, let's go. Extreme fantasy sports. Look, if you're sick of me telling you about Adam Thielen, maybe listen to somebody else who's pretty smart, my colleague Andrew Erickson from Fantasy Pros. He writes here, Adam Thielen's bus rate, 33%, was nearly identical to that of Julio Jones last season. We all saw how that turned out. Fade the 32-year-old dependent uh, on touchdowns wide receiver after he posted his lowest PFF receiving grade and yards per route run since 2016. That's not great. And he says, wait, draft KJ Osborne later. Sounds familiar. Sounds like something I said as well. So you're hearing it from more than one person. That's important. Always take that in. When a bunch of really good analysts are kind of saying the same thing, if you see Jake Seeley say something that Matt Harmon's saying, and then that the, another, you know, Jamie Eisenberg is saying, and I'm saying, guess what? <clears throat> Those people are probably right more often than not. Yeah. Listen to that. And when you get a collective think of analysts who are really, really good at their jobs, pay attention to it. Once again, KJ Osborne is free. Adam Thielen, you still got to pay wide receiver two-ish, wide receiver three price. And I just think there's more upside around there. The Gabriel Davises of the world, the Rashad Batemans, the Elijah Moores. Heck, if you're going to take a rebound guy, take a rebound on Michael Thomas instead because that guy could be – a huge big time wide receiver one in that offense again. The potential's there, the possibility's there. It's not there for Adam Thielen. Justin Jefferson is that dude. Might be the best player in the NFL too, in terms of fantasy. Justin Jefferson, I'm just saying that's a conversation for later. We come back. Hour two is going to be glorious. Pat Fitzmorris from Fantasy Pros joins us and the NFC fantasy preview. We're just getting started here, right? On FST Sunday. <laughs> 